Good morning everybody, my name is Crystal and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you like my videos, please smash that like button, please do subscribe. It is Thursday morning and today I've got to collect my glasses. I'm sure it's today. If it isn't, I'm going to go out today anyway. So good uh, morning everybody. The sun is shining. And it looks like it's going to be a hot day, a hot one. So, um, yeah, let's go. Alexa, good morning. Good morning. On this day in 1975, Steven Spielberg made us scared to go into the water as the movie Jaws hit cinemas. It was the first summer blockbuster movie. The shark was nicknamed Bruce after Spielberg's lawyer. Um, so yeah, good, uh, good morning. Alexa, what's the time, please? Good morning, Crystal. It's 7.54 a.m. Alexa, what's the date today? It's Thursday, the 20th of June. <clears throat> Alexa, what's the weather outlook? Currently... In Rochester, it's 13 degrees Celsius with mostly sunny skies. You can expect more of the same today, with a high of 19 degrees and a low of 9 degrees. Alexa, can you tell me a joke? What do you call an old snowman? Water. <laughs> Alexa, whose birthday is it today? Today's famous birthdays include French right-wing and nationalist politician Jean-Marie Le Pen, Australian-American actress and film producer Nicole Kidman, American musician, singer, songwriter and record producer Brian Wilson, American singer-songwriter, musician, record producer and actor Lionel Richie, and American actor, voice artist and comedian John Goodman. Um, I remember Lionel Richie. When I was a young girl, my dad used to take me to Dim Church. Me and my mum and that, and we went on holiday sometimes to Dim Church, which is a which is a seaside uh, town in Kent. And we was in this pub, and Lionel Richie and the Commodores were playing because Lionel Richie was in a, a group called the Commodores. Once, twice, three times, a lady. Alexa, how old is Lionel Richie? Lionel Richie is 75 years old. Oh, my goodness me. Alexa, how old is Nicole Kidman? Nicole Kidman is 57 years old. And Alexa, who is Nicole Kidman? Nicole Mary Kidman is an Australian and American actress and producer. Known for her work in film and television productions across many genres, she is consistently ranked among the world's highest paid actresses. Australian. Of course, Great Britain. Um, used to, we used to, well, we've still probably got it, Home and Away. So I grew up with the um, Alexa. When was Home and Away first aired? Home and Away first premiered in Australia on the 18th of January 1988. In United Kingdom, Home and Away premiered on the 7th of September 1988. And Alexa, Alexa, when did Neighbours first air? The first episode of Neighbours was broadcast on the 18th of March 1985, and a total of 9,001 episodes have been broadcast as of March 2024. A final episode had originally aired in July 2022, but the series returned in September 2023. Yes, the neighbours. In 1985, I was in I was in Chatham in Victoria Road, and there's a Victoria in Australia, isn't there? Alexa, where is Victoria, Australia? Victoria is a state in the southeastern part of Australia. It shares a border with New South Wales, Tasmania, and South Australia. So, 
there we go. I remember uh, neighbours. <coughs> I was going to work at GEC Avionics um, in 1985 and 1986, and I used to watch neighbours in the old house at Victoria Road where where my family used to live, which my dad sold in 2013 to move into rented accommodation which was very unlike my dad to be fair because he'd always wanted to own his own house so he sold his house when he had a heart attack in 2013 uh, didn't buy another one or get a mortgage no he decided to get uh, rent council rented accommodation very odd Apparently he sold the house, he could have bought another house, he could have bought a flat or put a mortgage on a flat and he moved into council accommodation. So there you go, good morning everyone, um, it is Thursday morning and I've got to go and collect my glasses today from Boots Opticians. Um, I had my eye test over a week ago and you have to make an appointment to go and collect your glasses. So we're going to have the same rigmarole again, waiting to get my glasses and be seen to. And just things going on so that they can go in the diary, the journal. So the bodyguard story, which I got yesterday in the mail, because we've got a different postman, it's a guy with a cap, a, a, a man. Um... And uh, can you read that? Can you read that writing? Apparently Amazon has printed this, Amazon. Now I can read that writing. You see, mess, mess with your head, play games. I wanted to read the bodyguard story. Either, either I need a magnifying glass, but I'm going to collect my glasses today, hopefully. And we'll see if we can actually read the writing. So I, I can read some of it, guys, without my glasses, right? So it says, The bodyguard story, Diana the Crash and the Soul Survivor, Trevor Reese jones with Moira Johnston. I can read that. To the friends and families of those who died in the crash. I can read that. Contents, Trevor's Statement can read that um, and then one uh, no number nine I don't remember 163 page 163 so Trevor Rees Jones doesn't remember anything of the crash it was not in any way <coughs> Trevor's fault Jill and Ernie seized on that one short phrase as they sat spellbound listening to Kez as he told them all he knew. It was not in any way Trevor's fault. Their relief was boundless. So I can, I can read it, but I have to put it like this to read it. The optician said my eyes had actually improved. So if I put it like this, I can actually read it. Very, very, very tiny writing. So it's printed in Great Britain by Amazon. <laughs> yeah, the bodyguard story all about the car crash from Trevor Rees Jones' point of view. The bodyguard in the car with Diana and what we all really want to know is why didn't Diana have a seat belt on because she always wore a seat belt why didn't she have her seat belt on Yeah, 
the poor guy almost lost his face. He had to be reconstructed. Amazing. So, last night I managed to take Max out for a walk. I started to feel low and depressed again. Um, you, it, it just happens. There's nothing you can do about it. You just have to ride with it. Um, it I, I, I don't know. Something triggers it off. Something upsets me. Whether it's from the past that's coming back to haunt me. I don't know. And I just have to get on with it. However much you try to cut people out, someone's always going to get underneath your skin. However much you try, someone's always going to like make you feel horrible about yourself and you just have to get get on with it and um i told you in the in the evening it's always worse you know coming home to an empty flat sitting down trying to occupy your mind when your mind is racing um it's difficult but i've got my writing i've got my books i've got the tv i've got the everything else i want the right company not the wrong company there's so many times that i've set i've settled for 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 you know anything rather than than something that's useful and helpful to me not something that's going to destroy me and introduce me to drugs and alcohol so you get you get a lot of when, when you're on a dating site i don't know if anybody else gets it right you just you you get a lot a lot of people that just want to mess about and muck about right they may not be getting any sex from a relationship so they just want to muck about with somebody and use them that that's it so it's not that i've been on dating sites not um adult sites where you sleep around and bonk each other and then go home i've been on dating sites tinder facebook dating that is that's not sites where you want adult fun do you know what i mean so why do i keep getting people wanting adult fun whether it be couples or, or just a bloke wants to muck about why am i getting that so I've had to stop it. I don't use them anymore. So one of the last ones was can you accommodate? Can you accommodate? Now if you go into an adult fun site, um, that they, they sleep with anyone anybody couples threesomes foursomes whatever i mean i am an adult i know what everything is even though i haven't done it i do know what these terms mean right i've just had relationships with men on a single basis right nothing else the one thing i do know is that that guy that came up to me on the field who's much older than me right he is looking for somewhere to live right because his girlfriend is fed up with him right and this is my home right it's my home right and it's not for somebody else to come into and dictate to me what to do because that's what happens, you see. If you trust somebody you don't know and just invite them into your life, I'll end up, you know, and also when you, when you rent a flat, you're in charge of the people that you bring into it. And if they start being a nuisance, then that can get you into trouble. Because you're, uh, you know... You're responsible, although it's rented, you're res still responsible for who comes into it and how they behave. 
And you see, that's how they get away with it. You invite them in, they wreck your place and cause havoc. They go back to who they was with before, and you, you fucking can get into trouble. Oh, you can, you can still have a great life being single with no relationships. Of course you are, but uh, we were made to be solitary animals. We were made to be social, social, right? But, um, you know, I keep getting, as I was telling the taxi driver on the way back from my mum's, very nice chatty Asian man he was very friendly, very happy, and a lot of foreign guys are, aren't they? They're very talkative, very open, uh, and, um, yeah, he completely understood. He said, he said to me, oh, he was asking me, how, how many children have you got? Um, how's your partner? I said, I haven't got a partner. And um, no, he was a very nice, sociable bloke, and, and he he said to me, "Well, I think it might it'd be better if you just had a friend, you know, just one person that you can like talk to and um, you know chat things over with, rather than looking for um, you know men to to like date." The world is so different now to when I met my husband uh, way back in the 1980s. It, it, the, the dating world was so much different <clears throat> in the 80s and 90s and I would say up to the early 2000s. It's, it, it, I would say it would be relatively easy uh, to find somebody but now, after, especially after we've all been through Covid, I think people are more wary People are more financially strapped uh, and, you know, pe a, a lot of women especially now know what they want. Um, s some women are opting not to have children. They, they, they just don't want to have children. Uh, and it's totally different. It is. So it's, it's much harder to find someone and because a lot of women also have had scammers on dating sites men get them too i do know that it's catfish on youtube is full of that it is it's full of it people scamming each other that's why i'm very dubious as to why it, oh you can send me some photographs of yourself Let's go to WhatsApp. Let's. You can send me send me as many photos of, of yourself as as you want. Why would I want to do that? Why would I want to give you my photos? Why would I do that? You know. So you do have to be careful. So, so there you go. But for me, the depression sets in at night time, a lot of it. When I go out walking with Max in the evening, it just comes over me for no reason. And I just have to take care of myself and make sure that, uh, you know, because, I mean, you've just got this person that is harassing me for photographs, basically because they're a pervert, they just want photos. And I posted a couple of photos of me in 2015 to my Facebook, and they pinch them. Immediately the photos go onto Facebook, they pinch them, because it's another photo for their collection. It feels like a weird, weird serial killer's, like going through my Facebook and plastering his wall with my photographs. It's really weird and unnerving, but you know, if I, I want to show other people who I am, what I've accomplished and that depression 
and a lot of things I've gone through, can, you can get over them. You, you'll never ever completely recover because the things I've gone through is so bad. And I have PTSD and, I, and all sorts of things that I have to cope with on a day-to-day -day basis because of what has happened to me recently. Because um, PTSD is, part of it for me is, you know, when you've gone through something like, like abuse, when you've, you've gone through abuse, you relive it, you know, you relive it. It's right, my cat is being naughty. He's just tipped all my plants off the balcony. He's got soaking wet. He doesn't want to stay in the flat. I can understand that. It's hot, but he's daft. He's stupid. And he's just tipped my plants over. So I'm just going to have to go outside and sort my balcony out, guys. And give the cat a bit of a dry off because he's... Uh, He's managed to jump onto the balcony table and tip my plants off and cover himself in water and I'm just going to have to sort it out. See you later, guys.